Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we, we are starting synapses. Uh, so uh, we we'll start with what is a synapse? Synapse is a junction between two neurons in which information signals are transmitted from one neuron to another neuron. There are two classifications. One is the physiological classification in which we have chemical synapses and electrical synapses. And one is the anatomical classification uh, according to the structure of the synapse, there is axodendritic between the axon of one neuron and dendrites of another neuron, and that is the highest number of synapses, 80 to 95 percent. Axosomatic, in which an axon discharges on a cell body, 5 to 20 percent, and very few axo axonal type of synapses. You can see this is an example of synapse. You can see this is one neuron. Electrical signals are, tra are transmitted to another neuron. You can see this. And there is a release of neurotransmitter. Seen is so complex. We try to study it in a simplified way. However, you can see so many neurons. So many neurons are synapsing with also so many neurons. But to make it simple, we have shown one neuron. Let's see the differences between electrical synapses and this is electrical and chemical synapses. In the chemical synapses, there is a proper presynaptic membrane, there is synaptic cleft, and there is postsynaptic membrane. There is a calcium, voltage-gated channels, mitochondria, synaptic vesicles, and release of neurotransmitters, and there is both synaptic receptors. In the electrical synapse, they are more like pseudosynapse. There is no proper presynaptic membrane, proper postsynaptic membrane. So this is the what is called as presynaptic membrane. However, they're more like these synapses, electrical synapses, they are called as gap junctions. So there are channels which connect two structures, two neurons. Through these channels, the ions they pass. There is no need of uh, you know uh, calcium voltage gated channels. There is no release of neurotransmitter. It's only the action potential comes opening these channels or what we call as gap junctions channels, the ions they pass, and they can pass in both directions. So another difference is the clinical synapse in one direction, unidirectional, this is in both directions, bi-directional. The synaptic cleft here is large in size. Comparatively, this is very small in size. Electrical synapses are very fast. In the chemical synapses, they are slower, and there is what we call as synaptic delay. Why? Because action potential has to come, has to open, open first the calcium channels, uh, voltage-gated channels, has to cause the movement of synaptic physicals. There is a release of neurotransmitter, and there is activation of the receptors. So this takes some time. So this is another difference between electrical and chemical synapses. Try to remember the differences from the diagram. Multiple actions can be done by chemical synapses in which there is also could be regulation of gene expression, biochemical cascades. The hair is just the ions that have to pass from one neuron to another neuron. When we talk about the physiological anatomy of a synapse, there is a presynaptic membrane, as you have seen, there is a neurotransmitter that is, that is released, there is synaptic cleft between the two neurons, and there is postsynaptic membrane on which there is postsynaptic receptor. Presynaptic membrane, postsynaptic membrane, receptors, synaptic left in between, and there are these are the presynaptic physicals. So, what is there in the presynaptic membrane? As you have seen, there are secretory physicals, there is mitochondria. Why there is mitochondria? Because energy is needed for what? For the active pumping of the neurotransmitter into the secretory physicals, as well as energy is needed for the movement of the secretory physicals towards the presynaptic membrane. There is a neurotransmitter that is packed into the secretory vesicles. There are release sites, of course, you can see here the release sites in this diagram where the neurotransmitter is released from them. These are the release sites. In the presynaptic membrane, you can see these red dots, release sites. The secretory vesicles containing the neurotransmitters, they come to this membrane and there is a release of the neurotransmitter. And there are calcium voltage-gated channels in the presynaptic membrane because of the influx of calcium here. Action potential comes, what it causes? Action potential does not directly causes, uh, cause the release of neurotransmitters. Action potential, when it comes, 
it possesses opening of the calcium border gate channels. If they are not shown here, but here two of the membrane, there are calcium border gate channels. As soon as the action potential comes, it causes opening of these channels, influx of calcium, and the secretory vesicles, they move towards the membrane because of calcium. Now let's talk about the neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters that are released from uh, the presynaptic membrane, there are two types. There is what we call as the large size neuropeptides, and there are the small size rapidly acting neurotransmitters. It's very important to know the differences between both. So we have the small molecule rapidly acting and we have the neuropeptide slowly acting. This one is small in size, this is large in size. Now the synthesis, the rapidly acting neurotransmitters, an example is acetylcholine. So where acetylcholine is synthesized? Yes, it is synthesized at the terminal, at the presynaptic terminal. There is recycling. So these small molecules rapidly acting neurotransmitters are synthesized at the terminal itself, the presynaptic terminal. However, the reno neuropeptides that are synthesized in the cell body. In the cell body, they are synthesized. They are also packaged in the cell body. So when they are synthesized, they are sent to the Golgi apparatus and they are packaged into their secretory vesicles. So the secretory vesicles of the small molecule rapidly acting like acetylcholine they are the same secretory vesicles that release the acetylcholine. There is recycling. They again invaginate and they form the secretory vesicles. Whereas the secretory vesicles of the neuropeptides, they cannot be recycled. They are synthesized and the neurotransmitter neuropeptide is packaged into these secretory vesicles in the Golgi apparatus. So they are formed by the Golgi apparatus. There is recycling here. There is a synthesis of secretory vesicles in the Golgi apparatus in case of the neuropeptides. So recycling happens with the small molecule rapidly acting, new transmitters, and with their secretory vesicles, there is no recycling in case of the neuropeptides. The amount synthesized. Small molecule rapidly acting are synthesized easily from the terminal. There is just recycling. So the large amount are synthesized. Whereas in case of the neuropeptide, they are synthesized by the cell body. A lot of things are needed for synthesis of neuropeptide. So small amount are synthesized. However, hair large amount are synthesized, but the potency is less than the neuropeptides. Neuropeptides, small amounts are synthesized, but with high potency. Whereas the small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitters, large amounts are synthesized, but their potency is less than the neuropeptides. Regarding the effects, rapidly acting small molecule neurotransmitters, their effects in the postsynaptic membrane is simply opening of the postsynaptic channels, be it inhibitory channels or excitatory channels. Whereas neuropeptides, they have different type of actions. They activate the second messenger G protein and they cause a prolonged type of actions like activation of the uh, uh, adenyl cyclase, activation of the intracellular enzymes, gene uh, uh, transcription. So their effects are long type of effects. And even the, uh, their actions, which are through this G protein, they can cause also opening of the channels. However, the opening of channels in case of the neuropeptide they are prolonged. As we mentioned, duration of actions of the neurotransmitters, which are small molecule rapidly acting, are short. The duration of action of neurobacteria, as we mentioned, which are through the activation of the second messenger, are the long. Example here is acetylcholine. In case of the neurobacteria, you have the growth hormone releasing uh, uh, hormone. Uh, and uh, there are multiple other neurobacteria more related to endocrinology. And I'll give you a list. You don't have to memorize it, but you have to be able to identify which ones are neurobacteria and which ones are small molecules. The question is how the small amount of neuropeptide released is compensated with, uh, for. Small amount is released, whereas the small molecule large amounts are released. It's compensated for by the potency. The potency of neuropeptide are much more as compared to the potency of the small molecule rapidly acting neurotransmitters. We'll continue in the next lecture with the synapses. If you have any questions, we'll discuss in the lecture.